What's up everyone? My name is Jessica Dean and I'm a senior cloud advocate at Azure. Today we're going to go hands on with Helm 3. Now before we dive right on in, I want to do a quick recap of what our agenda is. First, we're going to start off with talking about why Helm. What problem does Helm solve? And why did we need to update it from Helm 2 to Helm 3? Then we're going to go through and review what Helm 3 actually is, what was needed to happen to make Helm 3 possible. We're going to talk about some breaking changes or some things you should be aware of as you plan to move from Helm 2 to Helm 3. We're also going to talk about some new features. And we're going to talk on how you can actually migrate your Helm 2 release over into a Helm 3 release. At the end, we're going to wrap all of this up and we're going to focus on how you can get involved, how you can get started with Helm 3 and how you can get involved with the Helm community as a whole. So first off, Helm is the de facto package manager for Kubernetes. It is the absolute best way to find, share and use software that is specifically built for Kubernetes. In fact, it helps you manage your complexity. It helps you do easy updates. You can very simply share your charts and you can have chart dependencies. And you even can take advantage of the Helm rollback command to roll back to previous releases. Now, a lot of these things, if you've already been using Helm for a while, you're probably familiar with this. In fact, you've probably seen a slide exactly like this. But what you might not know is a major announcement that we made just about four weeks ago. Helm actually graduated from what was called the CNCF Cloud Native Cloud Foundation. So what that means is there's actually quite a few requirements to become a graduated project. First, it has to prove that it's ready for the mainstream majority. In order to do this, it has to prove stability, security, healthy governance, and it has to have a strong community, which is, as you will see throughout our journey of talking about Helm and how Helm 3 came to be, we definitely have. On top of that, there's a certification test that is required to make sure that it meets these standards. And we didn't just pass, we passed with flying colors. We scored a 198% on the certification test. And the final sign off was for the CNCF or Cloud Native Cloud Foundation Technical Committee to vote by supermajority to make Helm a top level project. This was a huge win for the Helm project. And if you've been hesitant about trying out Helm because of security concerns or Helm 3 was still in alpha or beta stage, it has been in GA now for quite some time, but this graduation step now makes it even extra ready for you to make that jump. And we're going to walk you through how you can do that. First, let's talk about version three and how it actually came to be and what it is. First off, version three is based on your feedback. It's based on the community. It's based on the best practices that we heard from the community, the different use cases, production based use cases. We wanted to dramatically simplify the way we were approaching architecture in Helm 2, and we followed through with that in Helm 3. So you'll see throughout our review and our demos that security has now been made an absolute priority. And since we know that Helm 3 graduated and one of the requirements was proving security, that investment in making security a priority really paid off. So right now, before I show you a ton more slides, this is a hands on session. I want to go hands on with Helm 3 and show you how easy it is to get started. You don't have to leave Helm 2, though you can if you want to, but you can have Helm 2 and Helm 3 installed right alongside each other on your system. So let's go into a demo and go hands on. All right, so I'm going to use brew to install Helm because I'm on a Mac. So I'll just do brew install Helm and that's going to give me the latest up to date version of Helm 3 which at the time of this video is 3.2.1. If I wanted Helm 2, I could still use Brew. I just do Brew install Helm at 2. And that's going to give me the most up-to-date release of Helm 2, which is 2.16.7. Now, I also wrote a script that will set up Helm 3 for you, and it'll actually give you an alias called H3. So you can see I'm just doing H3 version, and then there's the same version 3.2.1, and I have Helm 3 side-by-side -side actual Helm. Now let's go into another demo where we're going to show you how to use the same exact commands, but in a use case that we were accustomed to with Helm 2. First, I'm going to show you that Helm version and H3 version works exactly the same way as it did in our install. Now let's go ahead and try to do some list commands. First, Helm list is going to list all of my Helm 2 releases. You can see I have about four. 
Now, if I were to do H3 LS, you're gonna see I have, again, a handful of releases, only that was to the default namespace. If I wanna see all of my Helm 3 namespaces or releases, I need to put dash dash all namespaces. You can see there's significantly more. Now let's go ahead and try to switch over to a local cluster. We're gonna try to run some install commands. So the first thing is let's go ahead and try to install an Nginx chart. This is pretty standard, Nginx ingress, and you can see that it actually can't download. Now this is very specific because I don't have the stable repo added in to my Helm 3 instance. By default, it's no longer added. So you actually have to use Helm repo add stable and then give it the stable URL. Once you do that, it's gonna work exactly as you would expect. Stable has now been added to your repositories and now I could do Helm repo LS and I see the stable repository. Now let's go ahead and actually try to rerun that nginx ingress command. And remember, we're running it against the namespace we're working in, which is default. And so that worked great. Now let's go ahead and see the pods that we have in the same namespace. You can see that nginx is working. One container is kind of running, but not ready. Now one container is running and ready, and the other one is still waiting to become ready. Obviously, I'm running this on Docker Desktop with Kubernetes, so it might never get ready. Now let's try to install Jenkins, only this time we're going to install it into a specific namespace called Jenkins. This namespace doesn't actually exist. And you can see that by the error that it failed to create the namespace Jenkins. Instead, we actually have to create the namespace in advance, and then we can go ahead and rerun the upgrade install command. There we go, and now Jenkins properly installed. So if I do another LS, you're only gonna see Nginx as the default because the list command is only querying against the default namespace. Instead, if I wanted to use all namespaces, I would see Nginx and Jenkins, or I could use the dash n Jenkins. This works pretty much identical to how we would use kubectl, kubectl, or just the letter K. Now I can uninstall the releases the exact same way I would, only this time I'm gonna use h3 uninstall, no longer delete dash dash purge, and we'll talk about that. So you can see I'm now cleaning up, I've removed Nginx and I've removed Jenkins. All right, so now that we got to see that Helm 3 still works pretty much the same way that we would expect, even though Tiller is now removed, and we'll talk about that in just a few slides. Now let's go ahead and talk about what was required to make that a reality. First off, some people don't know that Helm is almost as old as Kubernetes. Kubernetes actually came out in May of 2014, and Helm was the child, so to speak, of a hackathon project at a company called Deus. Microsoft acquired Deus a few years ago, but the hackathon I think took place around October of 2015. So note that it's only a year and a half younger than Kubernetes, but it predates some very specific security related features. For example, it predates CRDs or custom resource definitions in Kubernetes. It also predates RBAC, which is role-based access control. So by the end of Helm 2, we were kind of tacking on all these security concerns. We had Tiller and we made service accounts and then you would have cluster role bindings and you'd have to kind of jump through a lot of hoops. As a result with Helm 3, we made it simpler, we made it more secure and we really focused on production and what our community was doing in production. We also chose to make Helm more Kubernetes native. So that would add to the dramatic simplification. First off, it inherits security controls directly from kubeconfig. So you don't have to go out and set up a service account and do Helm init. Helm init is actually gone. You don't have to worry about cluster role bindings and creating an account or creating a special namespace for Tiller. Instead, you can use the Kubernetes RBAC to limit access and resources. So whatever access your system or your build system has to the Kubernetes cluster that you run in production or dev test QA, that's gonna be the same level access that Helm has. Finally, we also opt to replace custom APIs for charts and deployments with secrets. And we'll talk about secrets in a few more slides. Now we've already kind of touched on this. This isn't a secret. In fact, we made the announcement at KubeCon in Europe about a year ago now, but Tiller is no more. In fact, previously when you would use Helm 2, the way that 
everything worked is that you would have your Kubernetes manifest or your Kubernetes JSON, your Helm chart, and you would bundle all of that up and use Helm upgrade install or just Helm install until there would be sitting in your cluster, either in the kube system namespace or whichever namespace you deployed Tiller to. It would take that deployment and then it would hand it off to the Kubernetes API. As a result, the way that things work in Helm 3 is it's actually using the Kubernetes API directly. So we've removed the mediator. And fun fact about this is I don't think I've ever heard any community cheer as loudly for the removal of a feature from a product as we did when we announced that Tiller was going to finally be gone. As a result of removing Tiller, now Helm is simpler. It is significantly more flexible from an architectural standpoint, but that was part of the reason how come we had to do the major refactor. It gave us greater security because we're not having to manage security for Tiller and the namespace and whatever cluster role binding you created. Now you're just communicating with the default RBAC permissions and API from Kubernetes. And as a result, it also makes it easier for future upgrades. Now, one of the ways that this works is it's actually rendering your charts client side and it stores the release history on the server. So I'll show you where you can see the release markers. They actually get stored as secrets now. Previously, they were stored as config maps in whichever namespace Tiller was it lived in. And we'll talk about some of those changes in the release metadata very shortly. Now, one of the other big benefits of removing Tiller, specifically from an architectural standpoint, is it actually lowered the barrier of entry for contributors because it's a much simpler code base for people to contribute to, submit PRs, or just joining part of the team. Now, let's talk about some of the changes, specifically the CLI changes. We really tried to make it more native and more natural in listening to how our community is using it. So for example, previously, if I wanted to delete a release that was deployed, I could do Helm delete and the name of the release, but that would keep the history on the server and keep the history in record. If I wanted to delete the history, I would have to do dash dash purge. Now that behavior with dash dash purge is the default. So Helm delete has become Helm uninstall and dash dash purge is no more. If I wanted to keep the history, I could override the default behavior and use dash dash keep history. Helm inspect has become Helm show. Helm fetch has become Helm pull and Helm search has become Helm search repo as opposed to Helm search hub. So again, just really trying to make it more native and more intuitive. Now there are some breaking changes and really I want to focus on this, but with the emphasis of don't worry, we still tend to support Helm two charts and you should be able, and we use should with air quotes, just because there's a few things you have to be aware of but you should be able to replace the Helm 2 binary with the Helm 3 binary so long as you take the following considerations into account. First off, there were some changes with how we handled namespaces. Previously in Helm 2, if I did Helm install Jenkins, stable slash Jenkins for the Jenkins chart, that would go, that would deploy out into whatever namespace I was already in, right? So that if I'm in default, that would go out to default. But if I added dash dash namespace, my new namespace and my new namespace didn't exist, Helm 2 would go out and create that and then release it. Helm 3 doesn't work that way. Instead, it's no longer going to create a namespace automatically. You will have to create the namespace first and then run the Helm install command. Now that's really important to consider if you're using Helm in your CI CD pipelines and you're expecting the namespace to be created. You're gonna have to provision your CI CD pipeline to create that namespace in advance prior to your Helm step. Some other changes focus around release metadata. So the metadata is now stored in the same namespace that you release your deployment out to. So if I deploy Jenkins over into the default namespace, my release metadata will be stored in default. If I release it over into my new namespace, the release metadata will be stored in my new namespace. This is different because in Helm 2, we previously had all of that release metadata in kube system as a config map, map object. Now, templated resources with namespaces set, explicitly set with that dash dash namespace flag are going to be installed into that set namespace. So if I say deploy Jenkins to my new namespace, but I do a Helm LS command, I'm not gonna see that deployment unless I use dash dash all namespaces. Pretty much this last bullet point really means that Helm operates more 
similar to how Kubernetes operates. If I do kget pods, it's going to show me the pods for whatever namespace versus kget pods explicitly say dash n and then get whatever namespace. Hopefully we're following each other. Great. So now let's talk about CRDs because we have made some pretty big changes actually to CRDs as well. First off, the CRD dash install is now ignored in Helm 3. There will be useful warning messages if CRDs are present still in your template directory, but we have replaced that with a CRDs directory that's actually at the chart root. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's say that you had the cron tabs chart and you have your normal chart YAML, your templates file, you probably have a values.yaml. Now you're going to have a CRDs folder with your CRDs within that subdirectory. We also made some changes to chart dependency and how we handle chart dependency management. The old style is we would have a requirements YAML and requirements lock, but the new style is we now have a chart YAML and a chart lock. Now this will be considered a breaking change if you use help dependency subcommands. So this is something to be aware of as you plan your migration again from Helm 2 to Helm 3. Now I keep talking about the release metadata and some of the namespace changes. Well, remember that even though the release metadata is getting stored now in whatever namespace you deploy it, the metadata object itself is also different. As I've mentioned, it was previously stored as a config map. Now it is stored as a secret and it's again, stored as a secret in whichever namespace the release is. So it's double base 64 encoded, which means you could decode it if you want to, you just do base 64 decode. But as a result, with this in mind, it is not backwards compatible. Helm 3 releases are not backwards compatible with Helm 2 release metadata. Instead, you can go from Helm 2 over to 3. We have a plugin to help with that, and I'll show you a demo. You can check out the plugin at github.com slash helm slash helm 2 to 3. And the one more thing I really wanted to touch on was some deprecated functions. We had a lot of customers using release.time, but that has now been deprecated in favor of the now function. And the reason for that is it actually gives you some greater control over date and time format. One more thing, I think I believe the, I said the last thing was one more thing, but this is, I believe the last one is the dash dash generate name. So previously in Helm 2, you would, you didn't have to specify a name. You could do a Helm install stable Jenkins and Helm would suggest a name like dancing penguin or fuzzy panda. And it would give you those fun, cute names. But because we're really trying to make sure that Helm 3 focuses on production use cases, instead you now have to give it a name. So if I want to deploy Jenkins, I would say Helm install Jenkins, stable Jenkins for the, the name of the chart. Or if I still wanted the old behavior, I could use the dash dash generate name flag. If I don't specify a name or I don't use this flag, then I will get an error. So now I want to show you a demo of how to use the Helm 2 to 3 mig migration or the plugin to actually migrate a Helm 2 release over into Helm 3. All right, so we're going to start off with installing the plugin. We just do Helm plugin install, and then we give it Helm 2 to 3, the GitHub address. Now notice that we are doing this with Helm v2 because we're going from v2 to v3. Now that we have the plugin installed, I'm going to do a Helm ls so we can see a list of the v2 Helm releases. So you can see that I have a deployment code fresh dash croc dash dev. Now that release does not exist in H3 ls, nor does it exist in the specific code fresh dash croc dash dev, which means that we're ready to migrate it. Now I can also run kget secrets to see a list of any secrets. You can see that I don't have any release history in the code fresh dash croc dash dev. And you'll see what that looks like in just a moment. Now, if I do k get config map in kube system and I search for code fresh dash croc dash dev, you can see all three releases. Now let's go ahead and use the two to three plugin. But before we actually convert it, let's go ahead and use the dash dash dry dash run flag to see which release is going to be converted and which release versions will be created. Now we can remove that flag and actually let the conversion happen. There we go. Now, when we run the same command we ran previously for getting secrets, now you see the helm.sh release.v1 secret for v1, v2, and v3. Also, if I still run the config map, you can see that the previous releases in Helm 2 still exist and the actual release itself still is, exists. So just because I use the Helm 2 to 3 plugin doesn't mean that it erases anything from Helm 2. It just sets it up to where we're ready for Helm 3. 
Now I can uninstall that and remove it just as I would any other release. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is how you handle Helm 2 to 3 when it comes to DevOps and CI CD. To do that, I'm gonna use something called CodeFresh. CodeFresh is a Kubernetes native CI CD or DevOps system. Now I already have a pipeline that's set up that actually deployed Croc Hunter to my CodeFresh dev Croc namespace. You can see that I was using 2.16.1 in my CF Helm step, and actually every step takes place within a container. So we know that that container is also running 2.16.1. You can see everything that got deployed previously and all of that looks beautiful. So now we're gonna flip over into our Visual Studio Code editor and I'm gonna show you how my YAML or how my pipeline works. First, I have one step for prod and I have another step for actually dev, which was the environment that we just upgraded. And every step works in YAML, so we have everything kind of indented, very similar to Helm and Kubernetes. So one of the first things that we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to update the Helm version. You can see that I'm currently using 2.16.1 but I have a line right underneath it commented out for 3.1.1. So we're simply gonna comment out 2.16.1 and uncomment 3.1.1. And just to be safe, I'm gonna also do that on the production level, just so everything's in line. But since we didn't do the migration for two to three on production, we're not even gonna worry about that or run that. I'm really concerned about just updating Helm two to three for our dev instance of Croc Hunter. So we'll go ahead and check this in. We'll just say update to v3 helm and we'll commit. Now we'll go back over to our browser and we can click on builds. Now I have a previous build that I ran that actually deployed out that 2.16.1. You can see that I have an approval needed before I hit prod, but most importantly, when we scroll up to the top, you can see that this was previously using 2.16.1. So we'll go back into the release that we just fired off. And this is a big pipeline. This is something that was already existing. So the main reason I'll come, I wanted to show you how this works is you can update very simply from two to three without changing anything that you previously had in place. So in this instance, this is a pipeline that I've used for a, just about a year now. It's one that I rely on for every demo. It actually uses several different popular tools in the industry, uses JFrog Artifactory, JFrog X-Ray. I even publish messages over to, uh, to Slack, and I also run Selenium tests on here. So I didn't want to have to rewrite this just for Helm 3. As you can see, this pipeline has already passed the deploy to dev step, and it did so with that change of just uncommenting out that one line to where now we are using Helm 3.1.1. So it's very simple to plan for, very simple to update. In fact, if we wanted to be 100% certain, we can go back over to Visual Studio Code and we can rerun the commands that we've run previously. First, we can do an h3ls, make sure that we're running against the correct namespace of dash dev. And there's our new revision at revision four. All right, so now that we've kind of walked through all of that, you're probably wondering what's next. We've been through quite a journey, right? We've gotten to go hands-on with Helm 3. We've learned how to install it, how to run our normal commands, and how to handle release migration from 2 to 3. So the next step is to upgrade to Helm 3. Go get involved with our community. We would love to have you be a part of it, and we would love to hear from you. You can check out v3.helm.sh slash docs slash FAQ. You can also check out helm.sh for our community calls. We would love feedback on new use cases and workflows that we previously haven't considered. We also need people to continue testing for backwards compatibility with existing charts. If something breaks, let us know. Finally, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Just one more quick thing is you might be wondering who I am. I know I introduced myself, Jessica, I work for Azure, but as you can tell throughout this demo, I'm very passionate about containers, open source, DevOps, mentioning a few things to be aware of in your CI CD. I am also a CNCF or Cloud Native Cloud Foundation ambassador with an emphasis in Kubernetes and Helm. And it was my absolute pleasure to hang out with you today. Thank you so much. Have a great day.